Hi, this is Greg Benz with an overview of the new range picker tool in Lumenzio version 1.6. Uh, this new tool gives us a way to specify an exact range of tones that we want to work with. And this building here is a pretty good example of when you might want to do that. If we look at this church here, this is a scene from Zurich, Switzerland. You can see that the bricks aren't any one particular tone. There's a lot of uh, shadow detail in the roofs, the overhangs, but the bricks themselves are even actually quite a range of different tones. So if we were to use, um, well, let's say, the zones, you can see going through here, zone 3, zone 4, zone 5, none of these tighter zones actually select the areas we want all that precisely. We could try the wider zones. Um, but again, similar kind of issue. We're getting the building now, but we're getting a fair bit of the sky. And we could try the zone picker, which lets us pick a particular tone and centers a selection around it. And it's not bad. It definitely is selecting the building more than the background. Um, but no matter how, how much I play with this, I'm just never going to get a zone that really uh, reflects exactly what I want here because the range of tones here is very specific to this building. and, and there are many different situations, and they would all have different requirements. So that's where the range tool, uh, range picker tool comes in. So where the zone picker lets you pick a single point and build a mask around it, the range picker asks you to select two different tones, and you build a mask around that. So I'm going to click on this, and we get this note that we are need to pick our darkest and our lightest tones. Doesn't matter what order we use, and we should be careful what sample size we use. So I'm going to hit OK. And so now we can pick either a light or a dark tone. I'm going to pick one of the darker tones from the cupula here. You notice that I'm at a 5x5 five five sample average. I don't want this to be too big because if I start blending across the different tones, then now I'm just getting an average. And I really want to select the max and the min that I care about here. So I've got my dark tone. I'll say OK. Now I get an, another box. It looks the same, but I actually want to go and select the lightest tone. In this case, it's maybe not super obvious which of these is the lightest. So one trick is to simply hold down and move around, and we can see in the box here these different values, and the L value of lab is probably the best measure of how bright the image is or the uh, brightness percentage, either one. But as we're moving around, we'll see some different values, and that'll help us quickly find the max. And so 53 looks like that's probably a, a good local maximum, so I'm going to say OK. And we now get a mask that's built on selecting everything from the tone I selected up top to this tone I selected down below. And this is a really nice mask of the building without the sky around it. So I'm going to go ahead and load that up as a curve. So with that, I can now adjust contrast in the image. I'm going to use the targeted adjustment tool and click on one of the lighter tones and drag that up. And then go click on one of the darker tones and bring that down. In fact, that's too much. I'm going to space these out a little bit and just kind of play with my curve to get the right contrast. And I notice there's a bit of a blue shift here. I could have held the uh, controller command key when I loaded my curve to get a luminosity blend mode, but I'm just going to manually do that now. And I think that looks a little bit nicer. Um, so that's adding a good bit of pop to the building. But of course, our luminosity mask is a range of tones across the image. Um, so we really just need to select the tones in this building, and, and this is pretty common. Anytime you're working with mid-tones, you're never going to get something that just perfectly gets just the thing that you have selected. It's going to be other parts of the image, and that's why I almost always use groups on top of these. So I'm going to Alt-click Group to load an empty mask. So everything's been masked out because it's the combination of these two masks that applies this curve. And on this mask, I'm simply going to hit the B key for the brush. I've already got white paint loaded. And I can just simply start painting on this mask over the areas that I want to reveal from that underlying mask. So just give this a good hit a couple times here. I don't have to be too careful around the sky since that was perfectly masked out down below. I do have to be a little more careful down below because there is some bleed from building to building, but I've got a soft edge brush and it should be fine. So let's take a look at what we've done here. We've gone from before to after. So just in a couple quick steps, using the range tool to select the tones of the building, applying that as a curve, 
and then using the group tool to refine the mass to this local area, we've very quickly taken the, our key subject and just add a little bit more pop and more attention to it. And I'm gonna ungroup it now, just so we can kind of see that final mask. And uh, I could, if I want to, decide to clean up this edge a little bit if I you know, was worried about bleed. Um, but I think it looks really good. And I could go back and paint this back in if I wanted to, apparently I missed a little piece, but um, I don't really notice much there. It actually blends just fine to my eye. Um, so that's the new uh, range tool in uh, Lumenzia version 1.6. Uh, I think there's a, a lot of different ways you may use it. Would love to hear from you how you are using it. Uh, just a couple more quick comments about it. Uh, when you hover over it, you'll notice there are a few options. Uh, notably, the uh, command or control key will help narrow the selection and the shift key will help make it more wide. That means that if I was holding the command key when I click these two points, then the feather falling off from those two points would be a little more rapid and it wouldn't collect as many of the adjacent tones. So that's a way to just get kind of pinpoint precision in your masking. Or alternatively, I could have held the shift key and then it would be more of a loose selection um, between these tones, kind of going a little bit further out, a little bit more spill. So three different ways you can use this tool on the exact same points to just go for kind of a little more selection, a little bit less, or just stick with the, the default, which is which is what I do most of the time. But nice to know that those are there, especially if you have something that's kind of noisy and it's hard to find the exact min or max. That's when I tend to use more of the, uh, the wide selection. And the other option you saw here in hovering over it is the Alt or Option to invert the selection. Um, so I selected everything in this building by selecting the two points in it, but I could have uh, picked a couple of points and knock something out. So for example, if I want to knock out this roof and not select it, then I could Alt click on Range and it's gonna have me go through the same process, but when I pick my two points, it's going to, and I'm doing this kind of roughly, so let's make sure that's all right. Uh, it's gonna select everything but that, so it's blacked those out. So that's just a nice way you can um, invert it. And you'll see it says not custom range, just letting you know that it inverted that mask. So you can use the custom range to select the thing you wanna work on, or you can use it to select the thing you wanna protect. So a lot of flexibility with that tool, and again, uh, would love to hear from you how you plan to use it. I think it's very flexible, and. I'm sure there'll be some creative usages, so I'm looking forward to seeing what you come up with. So uh, thanks, and uh, if you enjoyed this and want to see more tutorials like it, please subscribe to my YouTube channel or my newsletter at gregbensphotography.com newsletter.